everyone. I'm Vigye. I'm so anxious, and I, I'm happy that Devrim have introduced me because he knows me maybe more than 10 years. And as he said, that our surname is common, same. So we consider ourselves brother and sisters. <laughs> Welcome, by the way. Did I told you I'm so anxious and nervous because this is my first talk in PG Comp. Um, okay, I'm Bilge. This is a Turkish name and it is hard to pronounce. I'm aware, don't worry. So um, what I'm doing is basically I'm a machine learning engineer. I'm working as a machine learning engineer at EDB and I'm organizing a conference called DIVA. It's a dive into AI. I think you're, most of you are familiar with Gülçin. She's one of the co-organizer of this great conference, and I'm doing podcasting as well in Turkish. And in my free times, I do Muay Thai for 10 years as well, and I do running. And in fact, I just came from Amsterdam after Amsterdam Marathon, and this is the picture from that, after, even after that marathon. Okay, um, I want us to first meet in the common ground because there is a lot of misunderstanding in the AI world, thanks to the hype. And uh, that's why I just wanted to start with the, what is LLM, because most of the time, one, when you heard that people are saying LLM, they mean AI model. It's not just LLM, because LLM is large language model. It's language related model, that's why. And today, I just wanna give you a brief introduction about that for this reason. And what is language AI model does? It does get a text input. Then as an output, you may get more than one thing. It may be a text output just like you're getting from ChatGPT, for example. It might be an embedding. You will hear that a lot. Probably you already heard that a lot already. And it might be a classification output like, I don't know, is it spam or non-spam? That's a class. Okay, what about the input? Input can vary as well. Input can be a full document. In, input can be a chunks of document, like more than one sentences. Input can be a sentence itself and or tokens. Simply, you may think it as a word in a sentence, for example. And these inputs have been passed through the model. In this case, this is a language model. And this language model has been generating an embeddings to represent this data semantically, or maybe even sometimes syntactically as well. And this is what LLM does, basically. I just talked about the data, right? I keep telling you data. I keep telling you about the AI model. But AI is not just LLMs or AI models itself. It could be a traditional machine learning too, and they do solve problems. But when it's the traditional machine learning model, the data is most of the time structured. Like most of the time it is already pre-processed and it is already stored somewhere. This could be a database, for example. And you use these model to train specifically for your problem to solve the problem to build model and then interfere. For the modern world AI, let's say, we're all talking about the gen AI, the large language models, the data is mostly unstructured. And these models are using, these models are already pre-trained in fact, and using these unstructured data. So I, I'm new in Postgres community and I ask this question to myself and I'm working in AI field more than nine years. What is PostgreSQL for an AI engineer? Traditionally, PostgreSQL is great, reliable, resilient, with quality of data, but it is nothing but a powerful relational database for an AI engineer, and it wouldn't be the first database to go to solely. Okay, another question. What is PostgreSQL after PG vector extension? The state has changed, in fact. After PG vector, what does PG vector extension do is 
PG vector is a PostgreSQL extension and that allows you to store, query, index the vector, index the embeddings in PostgreSQL. So after the introduction of PG vector, I think the gap has been breached a little for AI engineer. PG vector has become or PG vector provided something to PostgreSQL now that AI engineer or someone who wants to build an AI solution can consider about PostgreSQL as well. Before that, you had to use another vector DB and maybe you want to use the PostgreSQL, then you need to communicate them, etc. Okay. What I'm trying to say is I said the let me find the okay. I said the data is unstructured. What is unstructured data? It could be an image, it could be a document, or voice, or video, or this could be even a structured data in the database. And then what we are doing to generate vectors to convert it to embeddings is basically pass through a model. This model needs to be specifically trained for that data type, which means that if you wanna process an image, for example, you need to use an image model. I'm not talking about the multimodal models yet. But let's consider simply, and if you wanna like, generate an embedding out of a data, an unstructured data, let's say, if this is image, then you need an image model. If this is video, then you need a model that can process video. And then you have the embeddings. What are you gonna do with them? Is it, is, it, is, it is not just a one use and you will destroy them. It is something you need to store most of the time and use it later. For, you can use it for many tasks to solve many problems. And you need the vector DB for this process to, to store it. And there's tons of vector DB out there but you need your data too to communicate. And I think after PD Vector, PostgreSQL has this capability now. You can store your data and your vector in the same place, or you can store your data out there somewhere, but you can store your vector thanks to PD Vector in the PostgreSQL. Okay. I want a little bit more emphasize about this PG vector capability because PG vector is great, but it can only do vector indexing and similarity search, which means that you can easily find the vector with let's say nearest neighbor search, or you can do the similarity search between the other vectors that you brought from outside, let's say, and find the top similar output with PG vector. And this is what similarity search look like. Let's say that these two images have been converted to a vector and a vector is nothing but a simply a list of floating points that represents semantically of that image. And then that image, if you want to do this semantic search or similarity search between these two images, you can use PG vector to do that. And you can use different distance metrics, metrics like cosine or Euclidean or dot product or Manhattan distance. Okay, what about AIDB? Have you ever heard about that? No. Okay. A I think somebody heard about it out there. Tim, did you heard about it? Yes. <laughs> AIDB is an extension. EDB has been developing. And now on May, the past May, we released the tag pre preview. It is using PG Vector. I will get into the detail. But let's talk chatbot, right? Everybody wants to build a chatbot, right? Every company. Every single person you talk, their company wants to build a chatbot, at least one. So, what do you do to build a chatbot? You store the AI data. This AI data is mostly unstructured. Then you make it retrievable. What do I mean? That 
this AI data needs to be converted to a vector and stored into a vector database. To convert it to a vector, you use encoder-only LLM or embedding model, we can call it. And then this vector database and AI data store needs to be in contact, like they, they should communicate to build a chatbot. And after that, you get a message, a user submit a chat message, and then it goes through that same model, same embedding model, so that you can do the similarity search. And after that, you send it to a generative model or decoder only large language model, let's say, and send the chat response to the user back. And this is basically the, the most basic way of a life cycle of a chatbot or retrieval augmented generation. Okay, previously I mentioned that PG Vector has breached the gap a little for AI engineer or someone who wanna build an AI application. But there is more than that Be because PG, what PG Vector can do is indexing and uh, doing the similarity search but generating the, the embedding is your task. Um, capturing the data is your task. Doing the pre-processing is your task. So, AIDB is providing um, beyond vector support for EDB Postgres AI platform, basically. And what it does doing, what it does providing is basically doing the document capturing for you automatically without going out of the Postgres file. Um, storing your data in PG table, or you can store your data in an object bucket, for example, object storage bucket, like S3 bucket. It does do the document preparation because a chatbot application needs that. I mean, not only chatbot application, any application needs that, the pre-processing phase. Then the embedding generation, and Obviously, vector indexing and similarity search has been done PG vector, so AIDB is leveraging that and using the PG vector itself, and obviously, the reg applications steps too. And maybe I should also mention at this point that it enables the sovereign AI. What do I mean? You don't need to send your data to out there. You can have your model downloaded and you can keep your data too and connect to the model and the data in your own environment. And this is what PG Vector do, and this is what AIDB is capable, or we're investing to make it more capable. So today, I mentioned about that AIDB, we released the tech preview of AIDB, and in tech preview, we're supporting 40 embedding models and one of them is multimodal in these embedding models. And the rest of them, as you can see it, some are belongs to hugging face. There is open AI models as well that you can use it. These are the briefly functions. What you can do with AIDB is you can create a retriever today. Uh, you can create a retriever by using different data sources like Postgres table or S3 bucket, and you can retrieve the data from Postgres table or from S3 bucket. Oh, I also forgot to mention that there's also obviously embedding functions as well. You can use it for text embedding or image embedding too. Okay. I want to explain a bit more detailly what is the use case of the PG Vector, how it makes your life easier as well, and AIDB too. So the use case of ours is a recommendation engine in this case. I can see a familiar faces. Yesterday we had a workshop, and in this workshop, people have developed that recommendation engine together with us using AIDB. So how do you implement this recommendation engine with PG Vector? Imagine something like eBay, Amazon, or Etsy, and you have this website, and you want people to run queries, 
um, by text or by images, and you want to get the results semantically similar to what they ask for. So, for example, let's say that I visited a friend of mine and I've seen a cat object in there and I took the picture and I want the same cat object in the Etsy and looking for it. And I want to upload it and do the search and find the producer and contact with the producer in the end. And this is how you can do it, basically. With PG Vector, what you need to do is you need to capture the data you need to generate the embeddings. Then you need to store those embeddings as a vector type in PostgreSQL. And then once the cat object has been uploaded to your system, you need to generate the embeddings by using the same embedding model. Then you can use PG vector to do the comparison, to do the search, similarity search, to broad out the top output. How you can do it with AIDB? And this is the answer. So it looks like a magic. <laughs> I will get into the detail again. But what you, what you are doing with AIDB is that you're providing the input. And AIDB handles the input, generates the embedding, stores the embedding into an internal embedding table where you can see and control. And then once the new input data came into the system by uploading, for example, then AIDB again generates the embedding and does the similarity search and brought the outcome to the user. And this is how does it look like from inside of this magical box. So let's talk about this magical box inside of the magical box. Okay, first, the initial phase, the pre-processing phase, let's say. You have your images in the object storage, and what AIDB does, connects to that object storage and fetches the images. Then, with your selected AI model, I have just shown you there are 40 different models that you can use in AIDB. So with, with the selected AI models, AIDB connects to that model, downloads the model, and then generates the embedding, stores those embedding into PostgreSQL using PG Vector, obviously. And, and then the initial part is over, the process, pre-processing part, let's say. Then I'm going to the user part here. We were discussing previously these area. Now, when the user visited your website, either does the query text search, types the search like, I don't know, um, pink t-shirt or black t-shirt, or uploads the image. The image, remember the image of the cat object, for example. And then what AIDB does, connects with the AI model, and it does automatically because it knows which model that you already introduced with the, while you're creating the retriever. So automatically it goes to the same AI model and asks for the embedding, and then goes to the semantic, I can't, I can't see it. It goes to the semantic search service, but I can't see it. It is next to the DB, and semantic search service connects with the database and does the similarity search and brought the top K outcome, whatever it is. It could be 10, it could be 20, it could be five, and displays to the user. So I want to do a quick real life demo, actually. It was video. I'm not a lucky person, so. Let's see. Okay, we already have, as I said before, we already have implemented with AIDB yesterday, and this is still running. Let's enter the search term. I don't know, pink t-shirt. This will do the text search.
and it brought the output of the tech search, pink t-shirt, because it does doing the search semantically. Let's say, I don't know, Pumashu. So it, it brought the Puma shoes. We used it, maybe I should also mention which model we used in this case. It's a clip model, it's a multimodal, which means that this multimodal model can process two types of data. Clip belongs to OpenAI and this clip model can process text and generates text embedding, can also process images and generates image embedding. So you can use single model for two different thing, two different process. And I, I keep mentioning about the reverse search, right? Image search. Let's try that. Okay. First, I just want to show you that I have just downloaded this from the website. And this is here. And now let's do the search with image. This is the image that I have downloaded. And these are the outputs. I asked for the top five, that's why we have top five. And as you can see, there's nothing is saying that this is Puma shoe, nothing. And the outputs are already Puma. Okay, I'm going back to my presentation because let's talk further. At the beginning, I mentioned that this is possible with PG vector. It's not that you can't implement the same thing with PG vector. It does that AIDB simplifies every, everything without compromising the functionality. This is how you can implement the loading phase, the initial phase, the pre-processing phase that I have mentioned before. In this phase, what, the, what we are doing, we're, selecting, we're basically loading clip model and then creating the table with the necessary data type and the vector size. And then we're processing each input, sending to the model, getting the embedding output. In this case, you're, if you're using clip model, you should know that how you're gonna use it. We're asking for the image embeddings, for example, at the end as, a, as an output. Okay, now it works. Here. Then transforming it, then storing it into, as, a, as a vector and uh, also other details. Okay, this is 130 lines of code. And as you can see, some of them aren't in PostgreSQL or aren't in SQL. Some of them are with Python, but it could be other programming languages too. And this is what you get with AIDB. Two lines of code. And you can run this through um, PC Cool Terminal, for example. You don't have to go out of the SQL to run AIDB. You can stay in SQL Terminal that you're using. And all you have to do is create retriever first. Since this is the S3, since our images is in S3 bucket. This is create S3 retriever. And what you need to provide is basically the retriever name, the schema, the data type, the model name. Okay, here's the model name, here's the data type. If this is an S3 bucket, then yeah, you should provide the bucket name. If this is not a public S3 bucket, you don't need to provide S3 endpoint in here. And then this is the like metadata phase, let's say. And then once you call the refresh retriever, it fetches the all images from the given S3 bucket in the create retriever phase, generates embedding automatically, creates an embedding table, and stores the embeddings inside that table. And that's it. Same thing. Oops, I'm gonna go back. Same thing two lines of code. And it is simple, as you can see, but we, we don't compromise from any functionality. Okay, next. This is the image search. 
the one that we upload the image and then returns the output in return, basically. And this is obviously implemented with PG Vector, using PG Vector. Again, you need to load the clip model. You need to get the input, generate the image embeddings for using the clip model, and does the similarity search using PG Vector, basically, and then return the outputs. And this single line is doing the same thing, that 70 lines of code that we have written previously in previous slide. And in this one, you, all you have to call this retrieve via S3 function to be able to retrieve the image outputs. And that's it. This, this is exactly the same with this one in work, but even more simple. And last but not least, this is the text search with PG Vector. I'm not going to talk through about it. Maybe all you should know differently than this time, we're asking for text features instead of image embeddings. This, this will bring text embeddings. And then again, retrieve function does the exactly same thing and with single line through PostgreSQL. Okay. This was now. And this is the future. These five pillars that you are seeing in here, starting from the data integration, goes through analytics acceleration, then there is search, which we have talked a little once we have talked about the PG vector, and the orchestration, which has the creating the whole AI pipeline, so the retriever phase, creating a retriever, calling the retrieve function is all about that and even more. And there's also the model serving framework as the last pillar. I'm not going into detail, but this is what we are investing as EDB at the moment. And there's also GPU acceleration. Okay, let's wrap up. To summarize, so PostgreSQL solely is only a relational database, but it's not your go-to database to develop an AI application without PG Vector. It wasn't, at least for me. And PG Vector is even hard to install. Then, PG Vector brought this capability, so that gap has started to bridge. And you don't want your vector to be out there and data is in somewhere else and then try to communicate and connect and even process that data. You want them, they're better together. Well, with EDB Postgres AI, what we're doing as a whole pipeline with data analytics and all, not only AI, it brings simplicity, hides complexity, but you don't need to compromise from any functionality, which is great. And this is the AIDB tech preview barcode if you wanna like, try it, install it. I will leave that in here, but thank you, and I can accept the questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bilga. That was lovely, really. Um, I have a question about the searches that you presented to mm -hmm. us in relation to when you searched the pink shirt, then somehow the system understood and it went back and brought some images. So uh, where is that decision making done? Is the AIDB deciding, okay, this is a text, I need to somehow model it as an image embedding or how does this work? Okay, this is the specialty of clip model actually. Clip model can understand text, it's a multi-model and it can understand text and image at the same time. While the pre-training has happened during the clip models training I'm mentioning, they, OpenAI has basically made a smart thing and they embed both image and their caption at the same time and so yeah. That's how it knows even though I, when I didn't like give the 
puma explanation and just upload the image of the puma shoe, that's how it knows. And that was run offline, or, is, or do you connect to OpenAI? Is, is it run? I mean, offline. Offline. Yeah, I mean, yes. self -control. Yes. Wow, so, and so it, the models are included in the AI at, distribution. At the if, you, if you realize, at the beginning, there was a lag. Yeah. Like, it took a little while. Yeah. That's because it downloads the model first, then sends the data to the model and returns the okay. result. But you can you can do distribute the software with, with everything included, and yeah, yeah, and disconnect to. Wow, well, cool. No, um, no, not at the moment, not offline, because it needs to download first, and it stays in cache as long as you use it, but then okay. it destroys basically. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I have a question about performance. Uh, is any reason to use Postgres uh, compared to some other database, which is often used mm -hmm. as uh, AI database or something? As I don't know exactly, but mm -hmm. about performance. If if there is any reason, a performance reason, to use the Postgres. I think there's a reason to use the Postgres is. Postgres is resilient. Postgres is like well-known quality of service and community support is the reason that you use Postgres. And I think PG Vector and AIDB is another reason that you use Postgres so that it is so simple to implement anything. Like maybe I should mention, I've been, like, I've been in AI field even when AI was in hype. I was doing my masters back then. And at the past, AI engineers, or maybe I should say machine learning engineers, or AI scientists, whatever you want to call it, they're the only ones who develop those AI solutions. But today, everybody wants one. Everybody wants to build something. And this whole thing, like AIDB, PG Vector, and Postgres all together, brings something to the table as a whole that you can use and easily implement without, knowing the, without having the high expertise. Yeah, I'm, I'm working with Bill again, so I just want to add something <laughs> to your question. So because from the performance side, I mean, you're right, it's a valid question, right? How is Postgres and PG Vector actually competing here in the vector database market? And I would say today it's okay. PG Vector is basically a very vital community in a sense, uh, picking up innovation rapidly. And there are also a lot of augmenting things from other uh, extensions that you can combine on top of PG Vector. It gives you other index types like disk ANN, if that says you something. So I think that's, that, that's, that's fine, but in, in order to really set us apart, that's also some, Bilger was showing some, this search pillar, right? Which is an EDB, definitely a strategy to invest deeply into optimization, acceleration of vector search to really set Postgres apart from the other databases here. But that's something in the working still. It's, 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 I think we are, we, are, we are competitive here. I mean, we, we hear a lot of customers asking for PG Vector and, and, and considering Postgres a serious comp contender here. Um, I think today we cannot come back and say, oh yeah, you are, we will have the fastest vector database with Postgres. But like, that's why Bill was resorting to the other qualities. We definitely have a lot of qualities that we can pull uh, in these situations why Postgres is maybe the best option for you. But performance, I think, is something in the working. Any other questions? Thank you. Just very quickly, simple question. Uh, how big was the data set of your demo? Like uh, it's in it's in Kaggle, cold fashion. Okay. Okay. So full disclosure, I work with Bill J. Fantastic talk. Um, would you go mind going to the, your diagram slide where you had the rag? Um, you had the rag. Uh, let's see, where was it? It was the the big the yeah. big blocks way back. Uh, I will this okay. one. So I I I'm being a a noob. So does the chat message go with the embedding over the decoder mm -hmm. LLM? No. Um, okay, just just the vector that you retrieve. No, not the vector, but the text goes to. Okay, maybe I should 
talk a little bit more. Okay. What is happening in this RAG application is that you have the embeddings, mm -hmm. and it's like a guidance for yeah. the generative model that you are sending. When, once the chat message has been submitted, you go, you convert this into embedding and do the search pretty quickly and semantically yeah. so that you can have the, I don't know, precise, maybe close to precise, because nothing is 100% precise in AI world, close to precise output or at least semantically close AI output. And then you need the um, source data as well to send it to generative model because generative model expects text. Okay, so in this case, you have the, uh, the embeddings you retrieve from your local database together with the source of the chat message? Absolutely. Okay, got it, thank you. Any other question? Any other questions? Uh, okay, so uh, if you go with your uh, future timeline, uh, Which one? future timeline uh, slide that you had. So uh, just very simple question. There is no actually timeline. There is uh, a gen the future of this uh, AIDB you had. Uh, somewhere in the end? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes. So, um, I know you cannot like give the dates, but uh, w when we could actually expect then the GPU acceleration support on, of AIDB, because it's, it's nice one to five, but uh, is there any kind of like timeline hint? Kirsten, <laughs> would you like to answer this question? <laughs> That's what he said. Nothing we can share in here. <laughs> Jess. When you get into dates, you're always into the, the territory that everyone really wants to know whether uh, what the dates are. So th this is uh, uh, what I would call an unprioritized list, right? What we want to give is a feel and an understanding of where we're headed, and we can prioritize accordingly, right? So GPU acceleration, for instance, very high on the list. That's something that we're really looking into. That's something we want to get after quickly. So any feedback we can get as to what's important is super useful. So I'm, I'm not turning the question back on you or doing anything political like that, but that's the situation we're in, right? We're all trying to explore this arena of AI and its wonders that go with it, and, and this is you know, our stint on that. So great question. I can't give any details right now. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I would even add, I mean, the, f the fact that you asked for GPU, right? That's also feedback, right? And it's not the first time we hear that when we show that chart, that this is the first thing that people are asking for. So that's basically also why we're sharing it. So your reaction and also after the talk, come to us what you think, what you want to see, where you see the most critical need. That's definitely feedback we want to fold into our priorities. And Jess will just deliver. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, sorry if I missed this in the talk, but uh, you mentioned that PG Vector is difficult to install. With AIDB, do you need to install PG vector first, or does AIDB with, with do the, that for with you? With the tech preview, you don't. And I, honestly, I'm new in this Postgres world, and once I start, I tried to install PG vector, which is a year ago, and I wasn't working at EDB back then. I couldn't. Like I, I received an error, and I was like, okay, I'm not using this. Right, right, and actually, that's 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 a nice uh, also point because she was talking about installing PG vector just from source herself. Well, one reason to go with a commercial vendor like EDB, it's just in all of our products. But you don't have to compile it or so, you just get it, we, we, uh, and you just at most select, yes, I want to have this extension, and then it's enabled. Right? So that's also part of uh, going commercial versus just open source. Right? Any other questions? There is one back there. Hi, so my question is more towards the scalability of this AIDB. So if we have tons of data and we train a lot, what are the results according to your testing? Mm -hmm. Since this is the tech preview, we don't yet the full results, 
But with GA, we will have the results for the scalability as well, and we expect it to be good. <laughs> I mean, let no me No pressure, yeah. Tim. It, it depends a little bit what, what elements you now having in mind, what you want to scale, right? If, if basically you want to scale, let's say, the amount of embeddings to, that you need to compute, and, and uh, that's part of the serving pillar, right? That's exactly why we're also investing in a, a, a scalable way to host these models. So we can pump through a lot of data in, 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 in a fashion. And that's, that's basically some different problem than running SQLs. Like that, for instance, might need GPUs. So that's why it's a separate functionality pillar that we're investing in. The problem is, if you make a, I'm not sure what uh, OpenAI model which we are talking about Clip exactly does, but if we are trying to do a feedback loop and train it again, that can lead to scalability problems with time. So that's where my question is mostly on. So how is this going to make this, make this quick so that the feedback loop also goes in and we are able to update the vector embeddings because of the new feedback loop which came in? Okay. I mean, that's, I think it, it, it starts to get a little bit into the weeds of Gen AI because we're conflating here a couple of things like model training and just model inferencing. At this stage of what we have, it's pure model inferencing. So the model comes from somewhere like these hacking face models and the open AI models, we're just using them right off the shelf, so to speak. We haven't fine-tuned or trained it ourselves. Um, and that's actually a stage that we even have been put on here on, on, on it yet, basically help the users to also bring their own models, deploy their own models, or maybe even fine-tune their own models based on their own data. That's a whole new dimension that also matters in the Gen AI world. But frankly, we are not, we haven't wrapped our head around it, how we basically would approach and prioritize it versus the basic thing, just use mods that are already there and apply them basically at scale. Any other questions? No? Thanks, Bill Gay, for an excellent session. Thank you. Uh, we do have a social event uh, outside.